and that should be going now. Um, so welcome everybody um, to our um, bonus special edition um, wrap up of Discovery Show and Tell for the Landscape Review today. Um, for those of you I haven't met before, um, I'm Anne Kempster, I'm Head of Delivery at the Centre um, and this work is being uh, done um, uh, by my team and we will introduce you to everyone really quickly in a second. Um, next slide please and I think I'm handing over to Marie at this point as well. Yep. So these are just a, a couple of uh, house rules for the show and tell. So we'll be presenting our findings for discovery for about 40 minutes and we're leaving 20 minutes for questions at the end. But if you do have questions at any point during the presentation, please put them in the chat. We'll do our best to, to get to it, um, either answering it in the chat or in those 20 minutes at the end. Um, Neris is also here with us today to interpret um, between Welsh and English. So if you don't speak Welsh, please make sure that English is selected in the toolbar at the base of the Zoom window. Um, in the English channel, you'll be able to hear questions and comments made in Welsh translated or interpreted into English. And you're welcome to use the, the chat in whichever language you want. And Neris as well will be happy to translate um, from Welsh to English for those who don't speak Welsh. So today, this is our end of discovery show and tell. Um, so this will be drawn from a number of show and tells which many of you have attended before, but focusing on our conclusions and our findings from the research that we've done. For the past 10 weeks. So we will cover well, make an introduction or recap to the review and we'll talk through what digital leaders and service owners have told us they wanted from the review. We'll present our insights from the research that we've done and present the opportunities which we've discovered um, in this discovery phase. And we'll finish by talking through the plan for moving to Alpha. So here I'll hand over to Anne to just talk briefly about the project goal. Um, yep. Yeah. So our project goal um, is to understand the state of public services so that we can identify opportunities and prioritize them um, and so that we can identify where we can join up teams and services, bring together best practice, bring together people who are doing similar things um, and also to assign investment to improve services. And here, if I could ask everyone in the team to, to introduce themselves, handing back to you then, Anne. Um, so, yep, I'm um, Anne Kempster. I'm the head of delivery at the centre, um, and I'll hand over to Henry. Thanks, Anne. So I'm the senior product manager, so I'm kind of keeping an eye on, on how we're delivering the overall goal of the review and thinking about all of the different work streams in the team. Um, I'll pass on to Phil next. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Phil Buckley. I'm acting as the lead service designer here, which is to say, making sure that what we deliver is useful and uh, extensible. Uh, Rick? Hi, I'm Rick Stock. I joined CDPS uh, last week uh, for the, as the delivery manager for the Landscape Review Team. Uh, over to you, Neve. Thanks, Rick. Um, hi, all. I'm Neve. I'm working as a business analyst slash user researcher on the project. So I've been out having some really interesting conversations with digital decision makers and service owners. Our hands are Rob. Hi there, I'm Rob Hetrick. I'm the technical architect on this uh, project, uh, particularly providing a uh, point of view on the technology survey and the insight it provides. Um, Neris is busy on the uh, interpreting on the Welsh channel, so I'll hand over to Marie. Thanks, Rob. I'm Marie, um, working as a business analyst and user researcher as well, so speaking to the service owner and digital decision makers to understand their needs. So um, just a recap on the scope of the review. We've been interested in services uh, provided by health and care, by local government, uh, Welsh central government and sponsored bodies. We're interested in services which are both public facing, so for the people of Wales and internal public servant facing. So those could be civil service, civil servants or um, frontline public servants such as doctors, teachers, et cetera. But we have, however, had more of a focus on public facing services. We're interested in services which are both digital and non-digital, and we're looking for opportunities in any service or area that could benefit from investment and from the application of user-centered dis service design and digital transformation. At the end of the landscape review, what we want to have is a database of services delivered across Wales, and importantly, opportunities for improving those services. We also want a method for prioritizing these opportunities and a, a data-informed list of services and opportunities to, with a roadmap to take these forward. 
But throughout the review, we have followed and will continue to follow an agile approach. So concretely, what does that mean? We've been we've ensured that we had clear governance channels. Uh, we've had open standups and regular show and tells to take you along with us in the journey. Had online repositories to, to share our work openly, and we've synthesized our, our findings regularly to facilitate decision making. We have structured the project in three phases, so we're now at the end of discovery, as you know, where we tried we aim to understand user needs. Uh, we began collecting data and we set the aims and scope of the review. We're just about to start the alpha phase uh, where we're going to gather a representative sample of the data and prototype our approach to prioritization. And as I mentioned earlier, we'll go in more details about our plan for alpha later on in this presentation. And finally, we'll finish the beta phase where we'll build a detailed model for the roadmap and finalize the database. Um, so in order to, to set the scope and the goals of the review, during discovery, we followed a three-pronged approach. So firstly, we map the landscape with desk-based research, that is looking for service lists on council websites, for example. We've looked for a list of services um, while speaking to CDOs and other digital leaders. And we've spoken directly with service owners in what we call deep dive interviews to understand better how they run their services, uh, conducting first some pilot interviews and then conducting 15 proper deep dive. So that's a, a quick snapshot of where we are now. So as I mentioned, we've conducted 15 service deep dives uh, for services which were used by over a million unique users and with over 5 million of uh, revenue spend on these services annually. We've finished uh, 10 Agile sprints uh, throughout which we've published four blog posts which have been met with really good engagement. So uh, approximately 150, 150 views of the four blog posts on the website and approximately 20,000 Twitter engagements as well. And we've even had services which have asked to be part of the review, having heard about it through the blog. So and quite successful engagement there. We've met with 33 service owners, uh, identified 341 services and 12 priority opportunities so far. And with that snapshot, I'll hand over to Henry to talk through what digital leaders and service owners uh, told us they wanted from the review. Thanks, Murray. Um, can you take us on to the next slide, Neil? Um, so early on in the discovery, we spent quite a lot of time speaking to digital leaders, so particularly the leaders within, uh, within CDPS, <clears throat> but also um, Ivan, Glynn and Sam um, as the digital leaders within health and care, Welsh Government and local government to, to understand what they need from the review. Um, so thinking particularly about what is their responsibility as a digital leader, um, what can our work in trying to understand the current state and then think about opportunities, how can that help them? Um, and then particularly thinking about those kind of pains and gains. So thinking about how can the review help us to identify um, where we can link up services? How can it help us to identify where we can um, deliver services differently? And how are we evidencing the state of current services um, to ministers and other, other people who are interested um, in what's happening? Um, and you see here, we, we did initially treat this group um, as almost a, a user of the landscape review itself. Um, can we go over to the next slide? Um, so the key output from all of these conversations was a starting set of 10 opportunities that we wanted to investigate through the alpha phase. Um, I won't talk about these too much at this point, as we'll talk a little bit later about how we brought in some other sources um, and have ended up with a a structured list of about 12 opportunities that we're taking forward into Alpha. Um, but this is really where we started hearing about the different opportunities that those digital leaders um, really see and wanted this review um, to try and evidence. Can we go on to the next slide? Um, we then thought a bit about service owners as a user of the review. Um, so the people who are running individual services that we're both interested in um, getting data from them and understanding what they do, but also interested um, in helping improve their service in the long run. Um, I think pains and gains are helpful to think about for this group too, particularly the potential pain of, of helping us to gather data in the review um, and it, potentially the difficulty of, of offering that engagement um, when they've got so much work on their plate delivering their service, particularly over the last year. Um, so we've wanted to think, we have thought quite a lot about how to minimise and what we're asking for from those service owners. Um, and that's particularly how we ended up with our suggested approach of using 
with traces and focus groups to try and make that as painless as possible. And we'll talk about that again a little bit later. Um, in terms of gains, we've also wanted to be really clear about how this review helps the service owners themselves. Um, and we've had a, we, we thought about what we think that offer is. Um, we think there's a few things that will, could help service owners during the review. So the opportunity to share best practice with other service owners um, and with people um, working in more central organizations such as CDPS. Um, we hope that this review um, is one way of helping to continue building the Welsh service community. Um, and we think it's an opportunity to increase publicity for particular services. Um, in the longer term, we hope that the review is an opportunity for service owners to help improve their services and potentially um, to help set those future priorities and to potentially get additional investment in their service in the future. Um, I think I'm now going to pass on to Neve. Lovely. Thanks, Henry. Um, so I'm going to talk us through the insights that we've gained from our service opener user research uh, and to kind of contextualise it. This is a brief snapshot of what we've done so far. So we've engaged with 33 different individuals or teams over the last 10 weeks. Um, of this group of 33, five of them have been able to provide full lists of the services they deliver, and another two have been able to provide partial lists. And it's these lists that we've been feeding into our database alongside kind of our desk based research. Um, from the donut chart on the right, you can see we've spoken to a real range of different people from different government sectors across health, local government, Welsh government, school bodies, and a couple from the third sector as well. Um, as Marie has mentioned, we've conducted 15 deep dives using two surveys, which we'll tell you a little bit more about later. Um, as well as collecting the data, we've been testing our surveys with the people completing them, trying to make sure that it's as painless a process as possible to complete, and that we're asking the right sort of questions to collect the data that we want as well. We've also piloted the focus group survey completion technique, uh, where we have multiple service owners completing the same service survey in tandem and then taking a pause at the end of the session to discuss anything interesting that's come up, particularly around opportunities or challenges. As a snapshot of the variety within our sample, uh, we had a big range in the number of users that these services serve, ranging from around 500,000 per year to around 600. We got a mix of public facing and public servant facing services, but as Marie said in the balance that we wanted were predominantly public facing rather than public servant facing. These services were across 10 different organizations uh, and a mixture of externally contracted versus internally run, as well as entirely digital versus multi-channel. So now I'm going to touch on some of the challenges we've heard expressed by multiple service owners as we think these are particularly important to focus on and think about the opportunities that exist for overcoming these challenges. So the challenge we heard most was around limited skills and resources. This challenge kind of underpins challenges three and four listed on this slide, uh, as it's a real kind of foundation for wanting to improve services or digitize them, digitize components of them, but not being able to do so. Um, similarly, it prevents changes being made quickly to services. We've heard examples of whole projects needing to be set up to bring about a change, or it being a slow process to get in touch with external contractors to bring about that change. Similarly, we've heard about a particularly acute shortage of internal cybersecurity skills. And we know this is a real priority across Wales um, now. So interesting that we heard that challenge come up. Then finally, the other one that was mentioned quite frequently was this idea of cross Wales collaboration being a challenge. I think coming into this work, we perceived that this could be an opportunity. So moving forward to Alpha, we're really interested in learning about what are the barriers to getting cross Wales collaboration and what can we do to best facilitate overcoming them. So evidencing these and diving into a little bit more detail, we've had, had some absolutely cracking quotes from our service owners about their experiences. I won't read through all of these, but please do. Uh, I'll just kind of touch on the takeaways. Um, we know that there are gaps to both capability and capacity within services, with many services having to recruit externally contract resource, both to design and sometimes also to deliver their ser service, with many service teams being blended internal and external teams. Um, training is really, really important in this area. 
both broadly in terms of specific like DDAT roles, but also focused in areas such as data and cyber. Thinking about integration and collaboration, we heard that there's not a huge amount of trust in this process. And I draw your attention particularly to this quote at the bottom around once Wales being a really fantastic idea, but it also being a bit of a problem for some of the more digitally mature services who want to move at a faster pace, but are limited from doing so. And that reduces their buy-in to supporting that kind of rollout nationwide. Thinking about change, as I mentioned, lots of services are dependent on external contracts and therefore that really limits the rate that change can take place. Similarly, staff are typically very stretched within digital or IT teams. And that means that there isn't this process of iteration and continuous improvement. Often services stay stagnant for a number of years until something happens and then a major change has to take place so the service remains secure. And finally, around data and cybersecurity, we've heard at Socketon that these are major areas that Wales is focusing on in terms of training and development. Um, and they really, again, tie into the lack of skills and lack of capacity in that often there are these legislation, legislative changes that require a rapid response from the service, but the service doesn't have the skills in-house to stay in line with these, and it creates kind of a real risk around services being secure. Lovely. So I think I'm now passing back to Henry to talk a bit more about insights from our service data. Thanks, Neil. Um, can we go on to the next slide, please? Thanks. Um, so off of the back of those service interviews, we've also been testing and iterating our service survey, and that's been a way of capturing structured data on how services are being designed, how they're being delivered, and what kinds of users are they serving. Um, this is just a snapshot of a dashboard that we've been building linked to that database. Um, and there's really two types of data in there currently. There is quite high level data on a wide range of services that, we've init that we have initially found in the discovery through desk research, which was um, bringing together current lists of services, um, asking different organizations whether they could provide the list of services that they deliver. Um, and with that, we have about 340 services, but only quite high level metadata on them. Um, we've then got via our service deep dives, um, a much deeper data set on currently about 15 services, um, but we're hoping to grow this um, to, with approximately another 100 to 120 services in the alpha phase. Um, and we think that this is the really valuable data um, that will allow us to move to um, developing a data informed set of opportunities um, to take forward. Um, so it's really uh, collecting a larger representative set of this data is a key focus for us in the next phase. Um, if we then just look at some of the data points that we have in there. Um, so we generally, we originally designed the survey in order to be aligned to the Welsh service standards that CDPS um, is, is developing and iterating. Um, what the survey does is give us a high level understanding of how those services um, are starting to put in place user-centered design principles. Um, and in many cases, we've seen some really positive signs with, for example, um, many services having teams with many of the DDAT roles in them um, and many services um, being able to talk about the different metrics they're using to measure their service. Um, some areas which we've drawn out which are interesting here um, is looking at whether services are available in the Welsh language, um, which is something which is a statutory requirement. And, um, but we do see that uh, even in our, in our deep dive data set, it's not the case that all services are available um, in that way. Or for example, looking at how um, approximately 50% of the sample set um, did not have user research roles present in their um, design or delivery. Um, and all of these things, um, are potential opportunities that we'd like to explore a bit more in the alpha. Um, we then, as an approach, wanted to see how across the board, the services that we've met with so far um, were meeting the Welsh service standards um, with the questions that we had in our survey. So we've created a scoring matrix where against each of the um, eight service standards, sorry, against each of the 12 service standards, um, we tried to assess um, using our survey, survey data, whether a service met them. Um, using the survey, we were only able to assess eight out of the 12, 
um, as uh, for example looking at um, whether data was used ethically we found that quite difficult to assess through a survey um, but you can see here the results of that um, and actually it's quite in, in many cases it's quite a positive picture um, showing that many of the services were scoring quite highly um, we would caveat that slightly by saying that it does just give us a, um, an initial view of whether those user-centered principles are being put in place and it doesn't necessarily um, mean that those services are taking those standards to the level that we might want to see in the future or the level that we might assess through a full service assessment. Um, but it is still quite interesting to see that spread. Um, can we go on, Eve? Thank you. Uh, uh, Rob's now just going to talk about some of the technology data that we've gathered so far. Uh, thanks, Henry. Uh, so for the uh, technology survey, uh, one of the, an important thing to say is there's only been five responses to the survey, and they were all from service owners on behalf of their services rather than an organisational wide perspective. So therefore, we, we've not conducted any quantitative analysis, uh, as it's too small a sample set to be significant, uh, statistically speaking. We can, however, make some tentative observations based on the qualitative responses provided so far. In terms of service description, there was good spread over um, all of the sectors, and some of the three of the services had over half a million users, or roughly half a million users, which is significant in a rush population of roughly three million or just over. Um, the service health responses showed that there's um, some concern over, or, or there's a lack of evidence rather to, uh, around modern dev, DevOps practices. There's long service time, service recovery times, often with uh, manual steps, suggesting manual steps rather than automated steps. There was an, a very infrequent number of deployments um, over months, quarters, and years, uh, suggesting that DevOps was not uh, strongly embraced as an approach or modern DevOps approach. In terms of changes, uh, all, all services rely on at least some outsourced development capability and typically multiple teams need, were needed to coordinate change. In terms of the commercial arrangements, again, all, all services relied on some commercial arrangements, although as you rose up the tech stack or the OSI layers, some services embraced open source components, which was a very positive thing. In terms of technology characteristics, we, we, we see a very strong Microsoft presence. Uh, Azure is a dominant public cloud and likewise for SQL Server at the database tier. There's also a significant level of private data center hosting with free from the five services stating that they are in private data centers. Um, database technology uh, technologies were relatively diverse with a good solid op adoption of open source. And there was likewise a good spread of devices in use from mobiles, tablets, laptops, and um, uh, workstations. Although notably the latter two laptops and workstations were a little bit more aged. One thing we'd like to uh, stress is that in Alpha, we need greater engagement with technical leads in services in order to generate firmer conclusions than the tentative qualitative ones we've produced so far. And I think I hand back to Henry now. Thanks, Rob. Um, so then on reconciling our findings, so we've potentially seen some different things um, from those different data inputs. So. Um, think about those more in-depth interviews where we've spoken to service owners and, um, got, and got a sense for how they are delivering their services and then um, looking at some of that high-level service data. Um, we found some, um, some different things. I think the things which are worth um, flagging at the moment is that we've currently really set out to, to test and trial that data collection approach um, and to iterate that survey. And we've still, while well, I think that the 15 deep dives that we've met with um, have been quite diverse in terms of who they support and which area of government they are. It's still only 15 services um, from across the landscape. Um, so it's a really uh, important next step for us to um, in increase that number. Um, another thing is that we're aware that to some extent those services have been self-selected. Um, so some of them have been services that have come forward and been really um, keen to take part in the landscape review themselves, while other services have been um, put forward by the different digital leaders in those different areas um, as good services to speak to, to understand how digital services are being delivered. Um, we think from both of those things, we have a hypothesis that they might be more digitally developed services than the typical service in Wales. Um, and we're keen to 
and we're keen therefore in the next phase to try and um, ensure we get that representative sample. We particularly want to do that by randomly sampling um, from services. So we'd like to go and speak to, um, for example, a particular sponsored body, understand um, a longer list of the services they deliver, and then to randomly sample from that um, to try and avoid some of those um, selection bias issues. Um, the other thing worth noting is on the, or, or rather uh, reiterating, is that the survey um, gives us a, a high level view of how services are um, delivering different elements of user centered design. Um, but we think potentially where services are, are indicating, for example, that they're doing iterative design, it might be the case that um, there are still opportunities to go further with that. Um, and that's something we'd like to, again, test further through those focus groups that we'd like to run in the next phase. Uh, thank you, Henry. And Neve, if you could just hold me on the slide uh, for a second, please. So that was, I know there's quite a lot of content there to kind of take through all the things we've discovered, but now I want to talk a bit about uh, what can we do with the information which we've got and how can we make the uh, opportunities that make this uh, information more valuable. What we can consider, uh, the information we've got there is almost a kind of a bottom-up approach, listening to the service owners and the digital leaders in across Wales to work out the problems which they've got and therefore the opportunities which could uh, make digital services across Wales better. But we've also done a sort of a top-down approach as well by looking at the OECD's uh, top ways of improving digital technologies across nations. And then we've merged the two together. So we've got a kind of a list of a total of 12 opportunities which have, uh, as it were, international best practice from the OECD and then those things which uh, you in Wales have been telling us as well. There's a heavy overlap in the middle, but some of them are kind of unique to both groups. So Neve, if you could nudge me onto the next slide now, please, I'll kind of go through those there. So you can see we've got the top down ones at the top. There's a, those where there was a, a combination in the middle and th those which have come directly from our users at the bottom. But I am going to walk through these because I think these are the things which you want to explore further in alpha because these are the ones uh, which we think are going to be really useful to maximize the value of this uh, review. So firstly, um, upskilling teams in digital transformation service design, redesigning services to improve the experience of users and service owners, where services have already been transformed to increase the uptake of them, to identify best practice and share this with other organizations such that the quality of the transformation is improved, and then uh, to create opportunities for accessing users' own data so that users know what is being given to government across Wales and how it is being used. Those which are kind of shared between the two, uh, deduplicating spend by developing shared components once, which can be reused across Wales, developing common standards for services and moving towards a centralized monitoring system for standards and offering data insights to support evidence-based decision making for those building services. Uh, digital technology tend to be really good at collecting lots of data, but making sure that is focused for people to make good evidence-based decision making is a really important thing. And then the ones which we've talked about just coming from our, our Wales interviewees and from our surveys, linking services together to create a more joined up system experience understanding where money is being spent so that we can aim towards better value for money for the Welsh digital pound, evidencing the state of digital public services in Wales so that ministers and public accounts committee in the public are aware of how we are doing as a nation, and also identifying pockets of legacy technology which are no longer fit for purpose. So those are where the 12 opportunities which we want to look at more in detail in Alpha to make sure that we are maximising the value of this, of this report. If you could nudge me on a slide, please, Neve. Um, Effectively, what we've got here is just a little matrix to understand how it did our kind of starting position on how we're going to prioritize these. So you can see that some of them uh, we have success from the elsewhere, that's the international best practice. Some of them have been expressed by the digital leaders, slightly different needs expressed by the service owners. And as we go into alpha, we work on the following columns there so that we can prioritize them and work out how best to make the investment. So firstly, does it help with CDPS's strategic ambitions across Wales? Does it have a positive return on investment and is it affordable for Wales? And within those ways, we'll be able to prioritise uh, the opportunities which get the most value for the Welsh digital pound. And I think I'm now handing back to Henry. Thanks, Phil. Um, so this is the final section. We'll talk in a bit more detail about what we're planning to do over the next 10 weeks in Alpha. Um, so the first thing is we're thinking about hypotheses that we want to test in Alpha. Um, the main one is the exact most helpful form of those key outputs. Um, so we'll talk in a little bit more de uh, detail here about those two outputs, the, the database of services and the costed roadmap. 
Um, so on the database, we're particularly thinking about how this can be helpful in the long term for CDPS and um, other people working in Welsh Government. Um, we are not expecting that it will be a live database um, where we have data feeds coming in, uh, for example, on a, on a daily or weekly basis. But we are thinking about how um, we can easily update this, um, update this database and take future snapshots to understand um, what has changed or potentially to understand different services. Um, so we're looking at how we can link up our, uh, a data dashboard um, to make a future snapshot um, as easy as possible to take and to analyze. Um, on the costed roadmap then, we're thinking um, about exactly what form this should take. Um, and I'll talk in a moment about the kind of detail that we'd like to add in that next phase. Um, at the moment, we started with the, those 12 high level hypotheses um, and we want to start getting into both more specific service opportunities, um, but also to start um, doing some modeling on the costs and benefits um, of those particular services, as Phil said, to start narrowing down um, to that costed roadmap. Um, as I said, um, through, the through the presentation, a really, really key point here is making sure that we have that primary data set that allows us to identify those opportunities. Um, and again, making sure that it is that representative set of services um, with the most helpful information. Um, so two key approaches here is firstly, um, the approach of doing traces, which has been recommended to us by Audit Wales, um, which is where we'd look to take a, a particular service, for example, and try and look at a comparable service across many organizations, um, or by choosing a particular service organization and choosing a subset of their services um, and then uh, extrapolating um, from that to understand how the organization delivers services more generally. Um, then in order to, to again make this a, a painless process and to make our engagement as effective as possible, we're thinking about running focus groups where we might bring together five service owners from a similar area, um, both to help them to complete our survey and give them an opportunity to ask us a question while in the room, but also as an opportunity to bring together um, multiple service owners and to have a, a more open discussion about challenges and opportunities that they see together. Um, finally, then, but just being um, to, to give a bit more detail about how we're thinking about developing these opportunities, um, we've got an example here about the kind of detail that we might look into. Um, and I know that this is just uh, an indicative example of something that we might look at. Um, but for example, in this phase, increasing the uptake of digital services has been highlighted as a um, as quite an important opportunity. In the next phase, we'd like to get um, to the level of detail where we might uh, identify a particular area of services that would benefit from um, focused investment in increasing their uptake. Um, then in beta, we'd be looking at how we actually operationally implement that. So questions like, why have uh, particular organizations not yet bought into that service? Um, how much would it cost um, to invest in increasing the uptake? And which organizations might you target? Um, but over the next 10 weeks, we're hoping to go from those 12 high level opportunities um, to slightly more specific things um, that we could then discuss who is most appropriate to take that forward, be that CDPS, um, digital leaders in other areas, or potentially um, areas where we could collaborate. Could we go on to that? I think the final slide. Um, so finally, um, our ask of, uh, of everyone here today, um, we'd really welcome feedback, questions, or comments um, on our presentation today um, or on our report as we share it. Um, either in this room or please feel free to follow up afterwards with any thoughts. Um, we then need to engage with a really broad range of services in Alpha and we particularly want to deepen our data on technology. Um, so we would really appreciate everyone's support in getting in touch with organizations and service owners. Um, we've already had um, conversations with each, with each of the uh, three um, CDOs uh, and we have some actions about how to, to move forward with the service in their areas, um, but we'd like to keep working on that closely. Um, and then finally, please let us know how else this review could support you. Um, so if there are any particular areas um, where it would be helpful for us to look into in more detail, um, we'd be really open to hearing that. Um, 
And with that, I think we're on to questions. Um, so thank you very much, everyone. Has anyone who's had a view on the chat while I was just finishing talking there, um, would anyone suggest questions worth talking about? Um, um, I think Helen had asked um, what we plan on doing with the data, if we're planning on publishing it and if it's shareable with colleagues. Um, and I wonder if we just wanted to expand a little bit more around our thinking about um, how we move to sharing some of this more publicly. Yeah, um, so I think there's two angles to that. I think we're keen to do some more targeted comms to each of the different areas of government. Um, so it might well be helpful for us to take some of that analysis that we just had in particular areas and think about how we can use that to engage, uh, if, for, for example, um, the group of local authorities, but also thinking about central government sponsored bodies and health and care. Um, so there might be some, some ways that we might want to share specific things there. Um, in terms of sharing the data that we've been capturing itself, um, I think, as Anne said in the comments, we're still um, working on exactly what form we want to share that. But I think our, our working hypothesis is that we'd like to share some of the um, more structured data that we've gathered. So information about, um, you know, uh, how many services um, are able to be used in Welsh, um, for example. Um, but we need to work out uh, whether we want to make that public at a service level or just at an aggregated level. Um, and we're probably thinking we won't share the, uh, the things that we've uh, had on opportunities and challenges, which are probably um, more personal and, and less shareable. Yeah. Thanks, Henry. Um, hands up for any further questions or comments or thoughts or challenges. Uh, perhaps I can gloss my response to Glyn a little bit, and if that's the case, so Glyn, uh, it, it's a very fair comment about the, the user research. And I, I know that's that's come out quite a lot in our uh, conversations with service owners and and chief digital officers. We attempted to combine that with the other skills, which I hope you heard were kind of there were crunch points in in the rest of it. So particularly kind of security uh, and service ownership and and DevOps skills are, are ones which we there appear to be crunches on. So. It's been kind of summarised in the text there, but we, we'll do our best to kind of make that a bit clearer. I can see you've got your hand up. Do, do you grill me if that's not clear? Glenn, I don't think we can hear you. Nope, still can't hear you. Can you pop it in chat, maybe? Nope. Hear me now? Yep. No? Yep. Okay. Sorry about that. Yep. <laughs> I, mean, I just love it when it's all being recorded as well. There, right? And I've I've completely forgotten Phil's answer to my question now. But it was um, on that on that table. You, uh, I think I think you were agreeing with me anyway. So by that table, you had twelve opportunities, and then I guess you had a sort of checklist and whether they ticked against various criteria. One of which is did they meet, I guess, CDO's needs. The other one was do they meet service owners' needs. And I just felt there was another column there, which is, will they will they improve the experience for citizens? So, and the the one the, the reason I, I sort of spotted it was because there was something about citizens getting access to their own data, which wasn't ticked anybody. But I guess the benefit for that would be the the user rather than the service owner necessarily. So, that, so that was one thing. Whilst I'm on the on on the mic, then can I just ask for because I missed the start and then I I popped away for a sec. Are you saying on the on the discrepancy between I guess some high level findings in the technical survey. Are you saying that the high level, uh, the broader survey suggested more of a digital culture for the 15 or so you looked at compared with the five that you did a deep dive for 
with the technical uh, leads where you felt they felt it was much more of a technical um, software focused approach is that is that the difference you were talking about what you, you said there was a no, was, yeah between findings yeah i think so i i think there's um there's maybe two discrepancies which are which are slightly different i think one of them is that we have a, a hypothesis that the 15 services we've met with so far are more digitally developed than the typical service and i think that's from um that's from the difference between speaking to leaders, both uh, both in, in terms of the, the CDOs like yourself, Glenn, but also speaking with senior people within, for example, local authorities. And when we talk about the range of services we deliver, we understand that most of the services they deliver are not necessarily digital services, or certainly where they're thinking about um, user-centered services in that way. They're not, they're not always digital, but um, a large number of the ones that we've met with so far have been um, yeah, re relatively advanced digital services. So we think there might be a discrepancy there, but of course the way for us to find out about that is to get a, a larger data set to do our best um, to, to do that um, in a random way as possible. And then and then we'll see. And, and it might indeed turn out that actually uh, the 15 we've met so far are, are more representative, um, but that's something we want to see in the next phase. Um, then I think there's the second discrepancy, which is um, getting mixed in there, is that we think our service is a uh, sorry our survey um, with the the questions that we can ask in a survey is a good test of whether services um, are bringing in some of those user centered design principles like being iterative or like um, taking user feedback or like measuring service metrics um, but in some instances where we're having that deeper conversation with a service team um, and we understand a bit more about what user research means to them we think there are potentially opportunities for them to take it further. So it might be that they've had um, two, two phases of, of speaking to the users of their service um, and they've had you know, really helpful feedback and they can show us how that's impacted their service, but it's not necessarily um, going as far as thinking about having a, a, a continuous um, flow of, of user input that would allow you to continue to your service. So it's almost that difference of, of good and, and great. Um, the service doesn't, it is difficult to capture that great. Um, but that's kind of what we want to get into a bit more. Okay, thanks, Henry. Phil, you've got your hand up? Yes, just to, I mean, I know I'm a natural optimist here, guys, uh, but sometimes I, I, you find that those who are self-selected are often very self-critical as well. So maybe that in some ways we're underestimating the, the people who are there, and that's just something that I think we need to, to go through as we get there. The, the, probably the, the evidence that Rob was talking about, about the, the lack of um, pipeline release and regular releases means that maybe maybe there are, you know, it's just not fast enough getting user-centered improvements out, but that's something we'll come up with out through, through Alpha, we hope. Would anyone else like to come in before we wrap things up? We've got plenty of time still for questions. Going to leave it an uncomfortable amount of time with silence for a large group of people. But I think um, whilst I babble on and close this out, if anyone does want to come in, please do. Um, but otherwise, um, thank you very much, everyone, for being here today. Um, for those who um, had to come in late um, or for colleagues who weren't able to make it today in your teams, we have been recording this and we will be sharing this out in the next set of week notes. Um, so you'll be able to watch it again or share it more widely. Um, and just to say as well, we will be back um, next week, I think, um, with the next round of show and tell for the start of our alpha phase. So we look forward to seeing you all again very soon. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye bye. Thanks all.